This is the Go Radio Football Show. Listen anytime, wherever you get your podcasts. Call 0808 17 17 700. Let's go. Good evening. Thanks for tuning in. This is Paul Cooney here from the heart of Glasgow and the Gorbals. Glasgow's on the Go Radio Football Show. So we start just after last night, uh, the other night, uh, against Croatia. 2-1 at the end Stephen McGinn was watching so too was Andy Walker and Andy we should have been here saying it was 2-2 we came so close to getting a point and my goodness we needed it yeah I really enjoyed the game I thought we competed really well it was a better performance than uh, I thought we'd be able to give we really matched them but it's yet another game where we lose by the the odd goal and of course the, the drama at the end when we thought we might have had a point Um so uh, tomorrow at home to Portugal my goodness they are uh, they are a quality outfit we'll do well to get anything off them Andy you were watching it in a public place and it it's switched off right at the end so you didn't <laughs> see a replay yes I did uh, Stephen you were obviously in an expensive seat somewhere <laughs> and you saw replays what happened at the end yeah he's given it offside as soon yeah. as he saw the replay he, I mean that immediate when he, that reaction to scoring a last minute goal because the performance merited something from the game yeah. Yeah. The big relief in terms of the amount of late goals we've lost for the national team over over the calendar year, and finally football's evened itself out. We've got the equaliser, but that first replay, you see right away that he's going to be offside. Longer VAR check, not sure why, but um, yeah. yeah, it was a blow. And as I say, loads of positives um, in the in the performance. It's, it's been the story of the nation league so far. We knew it was going to be back in into nations like. Group A for the first ever time, we knew it was going to be really difficult. Portugal, Poland, Croatia. Performance levels have merited more than, than having zero points up to now. We were so unlucky. Lady Luck not shining on us at all, Andy. And it becomes almost it's a, it's a habit, isn't it? 14 games now without a win. Yeah, not only the, the win we're talking about is against Gibraltar, yeah. so it's been so long since we've had a, a really um, notable victory, and that brings its own pressure. Uh, on Stevie Clark, which I think he will take on his shoulders. But I think what you saw from the performance, and it was a depleted uh, squad that we've got. It's not. It's not our best eleven. I think it told you that the the team that he put out, they're all playing for him. They they all. Uh, I think they all still believe in him. But it's a dreadful record, and um, you know it can't go on because if you keep losing games, you lose your job. That's that's the basis of it. The manager was speaking today and announcing the fact that Conor Barron of Rangers is in James Forrest didn't travel to Zagreb he's out the squad so could be the first cap for Conor Barron um, he gave some chances uh, the other night Ben Doak for example on from the beginning Stephen what did you make of the Liverpool man on loan? Well I think the evolution of this national team needs a ball carrier yeah. a bit of pace in the team Ben Doak was going to be at the Euros injury ruled him out of the Euros um, which is a blow in terms of we didn't have have him available. I think he should be pleased with his performance. I mean, there's a lot of because of the summer. There's a hangover involved, and there is a lot of people struggling to get going again with the national team, as is the case. Um, it's such a long time, but it's it's been lingering. But you have to take the small positives, and I think Ben Ben Dolt was a small positive from the the weekend. Here's the manager today speaking about. So how is the squad? They're back for a couple of days now. How are they feeling? Yeah, good, good. Obviously, like always, disappointed with the result, but. I feel as though I'm repeating myself. There is a process that you have to go through. You're playing at the, the top table against top teams. Maybe the results are not going to go for you, but we have to believe in what we're doing. And when I look at the players on the pitch, then I believe in what we're doing. Right, a lot of calls coming in. Let's go straight onto the lines. 08, 08, 17, 17, 700. Stephen is on. Good evening. Good evening. How are you going on, Andy and Stevie? How's, how's life treating you? Good, good Stephen. Yeah. How's the old night in the Gorbals? Things oh, are okay Steven. in the Gorbals, but the new Gorbals as well, you know these two. We're a bit disappointed, as I'm sure you are too, because we came so close the other night. We've seen, we've, Scotland's been coming so close for the last 30 years, as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> and, and I really think tomorrow will be another barren night. Sorry for the pun. The I pun really there, think, yeah. Ronaldo yeah, and Cole, no, yeah. Yeah, and I really think the only thing will be swapping at the end of the the night ball with their jerseys. There won't be any points in there. And I really think it's time. No, it's not Steve Clark's fault. He's did what he can. The players have done what they can. These players play with world-class players in their teams. That's why they're in there. But if this 
Scotland hierarchy in the SAP and Hamden should actually take the bold and a brave step. A controversial move here. I think they should go and point a manager who's got character there, character Mister, he's a fighter and all that. I think they should go and do to the Republic Island did. They brought in Jack Charlton to Newcastle. I think they should go and bring in Neil Lennon. What's your thoughts? Wow. Andy? I mean, Stevie Clark very much still the manager, signed a new yeah, contract I, not that long yeah. ago. Yeah, yeah, I think they'll they'll stick by him because he no, no. has... They'll stick by him. He's gone. He'll, okay. be, he'll, he'll be away tomorrow. He'll get beat tomorrow, tonight. He'll get beat about 7-1. Ronaldo will get a hat trick. He's gone. And MD, in the right frame of mind, can, will say he is away. There's no way they're going to keep him before, that, before 14 matches or something. It would be, I, I yeah. think I agree with you, yeah. Stephen, that the the level of optimism that we had, the level of excitement that we had going into the European Championships in the summer, that was that was unprecedented. We were all up for it, and I think the level of performance that we got, I think it's turned most people away from uh, you know Stevie Clark and maybe his style. But he has got a contract. I think he will honour that contract. I think the SA, I don't think the SFA will do anything about this dreadful run that we're on. I think they'll stick by him. And I think when you look at the the players that are there, I think they're they're obviously buying into what he's trying uh, to do. So um, I can still see him in charge for the World Cup qualifiers. I think the draws in December and. You know the problem we're we're having is that with, with every game that we're losing, we're we're plummeting down the rankings, and the the likelihood is we might go from a a pot two team to a pot three team, which causes its own problems. Stephen McGinn, yeah. what would you, what would you say? I'm going to throw it to Stephen just now. So it's it's you know everyone's entitled to an opinion. It's quite it's not maybe not extreme, yeah, I mean, but it's harsh. Steve Stevie's has spoke about the negativity from the summer bad tournaments bad performances it, it, it allows this negativity fester one th- one thing I would say is if we do lose 7-1 I think over the next three games if we lost 7-1 at home to mm-hmm. Portugal if we lost heavily in Poland if Croatia came beat us heavily I don't think Steve Clark would be in charge going into the World Cup but he won't be You're because he's, he's after Tuesday night you will not be in charge after Tuesday night. All right, Stephen. But, but, but we only have to we speak about the evidence. I mean, Steve Clark took us to Port, uh, Portugal and we were very competitive in the game. We lost a late goal to Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah. Yeah. We lost 2-1. He is getting a tune out of a very limited squad at the minute. So one, we have to be very careful. We have to be very careful because we don't know that David Moyes would take the job. We don't know that Neil Lennon would take the job. That's uh, that's the SFA's job. But the grass isn't greener. We've got a manager that's taken us to back-to-back Euros. And we are very competitive in a lot of games. Yes, we absolutely firing the performances. Absolutely getting you gripped your TV saying we're a right good side. No, we're probably in transition. But in a difficult group, we are losing, we are losing games narrowly. I, th- I didn't, didn't think we deserved to lose the other night. We were excellent at home to Poland in a difficult night. The first game at Hamden off the back of our Euros, 2-0 down. They were brilliant in the second half. Grant Hanley's made a big error in the last minute to make it 3-2. If the Euros hadn't happened, if this was a new manager, you'd have said there's loads of positives from the first three games. Stephen, back to there's you. Nothing here. Yeah. What's that? Well, I, I've listened to you all, and I'll tell you something else. I totally disagree with you all because if you were in charge, even you owned a football club mm. and that run of results, didn't matter if you're playing the Scottish League or any kind of league or the National League, that manager would be away. But he's taken us to two tournaments. Took us to, as you know. <laughs> yeah. but, but what has he done after that? They've collapsed. Steve, it's opinion, yeah, Stevie. They were lucky. Yeah. They were actually lucky in the last two, if you ask me. You, d- you disagree with us. I don't think we'll lose 7 1 tomorrow night. Yeah. So, yeah, so there's not a chance yeah, we're going to lose sure. seven one. We're, yeah. we're not that type and, of and team. There's not a chance we're, yeah. we're going to yeah. lose heavily in the in the next three games. But I do take Stephen's point that I think there is there are a lot of people like Stephen who have completely gone off uh, the, the the style of, of Stevie Clark. Maybe his maybe his uh, press conferences uh, don't fill them with any degree of uh, excitement. Um, but looking at the level of performance. Like Stephen here in the studio, I thought we were so unlucky not to, to get a point. 
What does he? What does he feel about his team, Stephen? I'll come back to you in a second. Uh, Stevie Clark was asked today what about the players? Um, do they believe for tomorrow night? Yeah, the crowd have got a part to play. The, the crowd also have to believe in their in their team and their players. And I, I don't see any reason why they shouldn't believe in this this group of players. We, we've got players who are. I think Daryl just told me we've got three players that are inside the top ten cap appearances for the country. After 20 years in the international wilderness, this group of players have, have been to two major tournaments. They've got promotion to this top level of the, the Nations League. So I don't understand why the why people would be doubting about this group of players. It's a tough moment, there's no doubt about it, but we believe in ourselves. Tough moment, tough call for him if he was listening. Stephen, what's your last thought? My last thought is, it's not a cap, you should be giving these players as a mask. For what? A mask, you shouldn't be giving them a cap. It's making them like, they're embarrassing. Oh, come on. Hey. Uh, you're not, you're not like any English of them, Stephen, no. What? Not actually one jotter of any of them. None of them. Actually, you'll need to bring in somebody but high calibre. You heard you talk about David Moyes there and get rid of the whole shebang of these and put folk in there that'll fight, that'll fight for that jersey. This isn't a club. Like, a new manager can't yeah, exactly. get insane yeah, players. Sure. But you'll need to change the style and that's why I'll need to bring... I'll tell you what, before I go here, my final yeah. song is, England won the World Cup in 66, mm. right? They've won nothing since, and they were going to bring in Peter Taylor and Brian Clough, but Brian Clough was too high profile for them, they couldn't manage him, yeah. they didn't know what to do with him. That man would have won with them the World Cup and everything went later. One of the greatest managers that ever came out of England. Yeah. I think Neil Lennon has got the same calibre as him. Mm. And he could do it as a wonderful job. And he'll bring in players that will play for that jersey. And he'll get shot off of them. And yet, Stephen, he was considered by his own uh, country, well, with the Republic of Ireland just a few months ago, and he, he didn't get the job. But listen, Stephen, thanks for calling Go Radio. We appreciate that. 08, 08, 17, 17, 700. Quite sobering, Andy, if you're uh, part of the squad and you're thinking, oh, my goodness, Stevie there's kind of written he, us all off. He doesn't yeah. seem to care much for the players. I, I'm not sh- so sure he cares much about the results uh, either, but... No, I'm dead keen to see this uh, Scotland squad get better, develop. I think Stephen here in the studio makes a really good point about just the the team in general being in transition. And we've got an exciting talent like Ben Doak. I hope we can find a a goalkeeper as good as, you know, the ones we've had. You know, Marshall, McGregor, Craig Gordon, he can't go on forever. Can he possibly even get uh, help us get to the... The World Cup, he's going to be 43. I mean, it, it seems unrealistic. So there are, um, you know, gaps for, for some players to to come in and make a name for themselves. But we know it's so different from club football. You can't go out, get the checkbook out and sign somebody unless you can find a grandfather, grandmother, great or whatever and do what Ireland did in the 1990 World yeah. Cup and, and, you know, they, they uncovered people who'd drank Guinness. The, the, these guys don't want to play for Scotland. Yeah. I'm, no. sure, I'm sure Steve Clark would have tried his absolute best to get Harvey Barnes mm-hmm. Elliot yeah, Anderson is in course. England under 21 squad yeah. was offered the chance to go mm-hmm. he, he, he turned up I think he was named the squad turned up for training went no this isn't for me yeah. Steve Clark's tried to unearth these guys that can help take us to the next level we are I, I know Steve I understand his frustration off the back but history suggests we can't even get out of group at a, a major tournament mm-hmm. with some of the great players of the past these guys have taken us back to back Euros. We probably should have beaten Hungary. We were disappointing over the course of the, the summer. But it's not, I mean, seen as in the last 20 years, far worse positions than we are right now. We're going to be live at Hamden tomorrow night in the build up to Arnold's. the game. Stevie will be with us. No, no, he's not. But <laughs> hey, listen, he's entitled. And there's quite a few messages coming in as well. Some people agree with him. Not yes. so much about who. Listen, I get it. When yeah. you speak yeah. to the Scotland supporters, you meet. Uh, I, I watched it in a pub on Saturday. I uh, spoke to a couple of fans in there and they, they just weren't having. I mean, they like the players, they like the, yeah. the team, but they just weren't having Stevie Clark. And you, you find that at club and sure. international mm. football. Can't keep everyone happy, but it is tough. And you know the record books. And we, we, we're not negative here at all. We love our football, um, but we will go in the record books if we lose tomorrow night. Five straight defeats in a row. It's never happened. So surely, can we get the draw? Stevie thinks, no, it's not going to happen. Could we get a draw? Could we get a win? I mean, it's possible, but how are we going to do it? So what's the team for tomorrow night? Have a think, guys. Um, people asking us here... 
because in, the other night we lined up with Craig Gordon and goals as we knew it would be Tony Rawson, John Suter, Grant Hanley came back in. Uh, he is so um, loyal, isn't he, to players who are maybe not playing. Uh, and Andy Robertson, of course, Billy Gilmer, Kenny McLean, Scott McTominay, Ben Doak, Lyndon Dykes and Ryan Christie. So Ryan Gold came on, as you know, and Shea Adams had been in his sick bed all week, but he came on and... He was involved in that goal, which was offside right at the end. What did you think? 08, 08, 17, 17, 700. Let's see if we can surely... to and, and he's surely not five defeats well, on the trot. Well, I, I, I don't fancy us against Portugal. I think they're in terrific form. They know that a victory and they'll be straight through to yeah. the... Is it the quarterfinals that they, they qualify for? They will fancy their chances of winning the whole tournament. Uh, that's how good they are. But we are at a great level to compete you know we have got into the the top tier England have been relegated from the top tier look at all the pressure that um, Lee Carsley is coming under and the, the clamour to get people that you know Guardiola and Jurgen yeah. Klopp when he was available to, to be involved in the England uh, international scene so yeah I just it's the it, there's still a terrible uh, hangover from the events of the summer because it was such a letdown. There was no adventure and that is what everyone is hoping to see. And I think we get a wee bit of it when we see Ben Doak being really positive and yeah. trying to make mm. things happen. The table looks like this uh, in our group. Portugal, nine points from the three games. Croatia on six. Poland on three. Scotland, nil Puan after the first three uh, tomorrow night. As we know, Scotland against Portugal. It's a great game to go and see though, isn't it? The kids will be desperate to watch uh, Ronaldo and co. They've been staying down Loch Lomond yeah. side, so I know it was yeah. busy down there. He was spotted in a shoot at the... Uh, and it's just the, the style. Water slide. The style yeah. that they play. It's just so impressive. And everyone going tomorrow, look at their first touch. It'll be instant control. Mm. It's uh, it's great to see. Who else are you looking to? Diego Jota, for example? Well, the, the thing is, I mean... Cristiano Ronaldo might not start mm. that's, how, that's how good a side they are mm. they could have a front three of Jota Pedro Neto yeah. Bernardo Silva so that is the strength I mean a fully firing Scotland team with all their players hosting Portugal would go in as huge underdogs never mind this transition period with, with the amount of players but Ronaldo mania has hit Paisley today yep. it's a uh, phone exploded this morning yeah. I think it leaked that they were training um, I saw it on social so I phoned you so they have been training today at uh, and last night last night and tonight, and tonight. Um, so crowds gathering yeah. to, to get a glimpse and of Ronaldo I mean Ronaldo yeah. is a phenomenon yeah. he's oh. been a lot of these kids yeah. hero for, for a long period yeah. so um, to see him training in Fergusley the, bit, yeah. the big experience <laughs> for, for him yeah. and the locals and the oh, yeah. uh, can we go straight after the show Andy you wouldn't mind eh Oh, we've got to get yeah. a picture team. He'll come over and say, okay. Andy, some okay. great play. Yeah. Shame <laughs> for a wee dive get a or few two. tips. 08, 08, <laughs> 17, 17, 700 International Week. And then it's back to the domestic football and what a card coming up this weekend. Not least Celtic against Aberdeen. And then Sunday, Kilmarnock against Rangers. But for Scotland, what are you thinking? So the manager called up Conor Barron today what a few months it's been for him isn't it he was in the Aberdeen team but in and out of it last season because uh, you know young player comes to Rangers in the summer and people think yeah could be a good squad player but my goodness he starts just about every game uh, here's the manager speaking about his call up yeah everyone's good good to go yeah I think I've I've already got a number of players within the squad that haven't been in the squad before so Conor's been with us it was it was an obvious call up just gives us a little bit more more depth to the squad Stephen, what are you thinking? Conor Barron? Yeah, he'll be really pleased with how it's gone going to Rangers. As I said, I thought over the course of the summer Rangers would strengthen the midfield area. I thought Conor Barron would come in and have to fight um, for, hard for his place. He's been Rangers' best midfielder. He obviously had that disappointing night against Leon, but you take him out of the team and, and he has to go on and, and play. It's, it's not a strong area of the park for Rangers, but on a personal level, a young Scottish player playing for the under-21s last year in and out the, the team at Aberdeen he gets to move to Rangers into the national team and playing regularly for, for Rangers first team You can see the progression he's made Andy in the last few months Yes I like him it's not often you get a player moving from Aberdeen to Rangers mm -hmm. uh, given the relationship between those two clubs but he has made a, a really positive one I think his level of performance has been really good of course it was a a mistake against Leon, but uh, didn't shy away from it. 
And uh, I think, like Stephen, I think he's been one of Rangers' most productive uh, players this season. Certainly has been. What are you thinking then? Were you at the game? Are you going to the game tomorrow night? Give us a call 0808 17 17 700. Internationalist Andy Walker is here and the man who was capped all the way up to the main level and he's the invincible. Stephen McGinn is in the house. This is the Go Radio Football Show. Listen anytime, wherever you get your podcasts. Let's go! Let's go! Monday evening, Paul Cooney with Stephen McGinn and Andy Walker. Andy did so well on Friday night. I was listening, I was in London, and I bumped into an old teammate of yours who tunes in at times, former Celtic and Scotland captain, Roy Aitken. Best captain I played under. He was magnificent in every way. Great player, just a great leader, great talker in the dressing room. Great humour as, yeah. as well. So I uh, haven't seen Big Roy for a while, so it would it's always a pleasure to meet up. And of course, everyone was speaking to him and he was talking about his time at Birmingham City, for example. He had time yeah. in Dubai. Yeah. Uh, and people who forget met, that. At, yeah, yeah, I met him out in Dubai a couple of times years ago when we were asked out to, to do a football thing or a, a golfy thing. And, and Big Roy was living there for, for a good while, so uh, always a pleasure to see him. Bumped into Martin O'Neill as well, who joined us on the programme uh, last year. So maybe he'll join us again in the future. And saw Jim White. So it was good to see Jim in London. Yeah, he saw all the stars. Whitey was there as well. Whitey was there in great form down in. Do you like London, Andy? Yes. Yeah. Great city. Going down next week uh, to do a couple of games Tuesday, Wednesday. Mm -hmm. But I'd much rather be at the at the ground. But we we have to do them from uh, London. So a couple of nights there. You'll be seeing Newcastle, I think, this weekend. And of course, Eddie Howe. His name's coming up more and more now. Could be the next England manager. Yeah, it's amazing how it all just pans out. I think there's a lot of people that would like just an Englishman, Mm -hmm. maybe the top Englishman. He arguably is is one of them. And um, I know that there's a lot of. You know, uncertainty at Newcastle and what they would like to do. They are, what, seventh in the table at the moment. Brighton are actually above them um, in the table. So that'll be a good game of the weekend. Really looking forward to it. Stephen, uh, in your case, you worked for a long time in England, did so well. Um, Sheffield United, Watford. Um, do you miss English football at all? I liked certain aspects of it. I loved one of the best things for me was so used to playing. Sometimes you'd play teams five and six times a season. Yeah. Loved the. Different, a different aspect of every game eh, only playing each other twice a season yeah. playing so many different games loved everything about that don't miss the travel no. in between games sometimes you <laughs> would have some uh, questionable weeks in the schedule where you'd maybe be away to the south of England on the Saturday and then wow. up I, north I don't the, think we were at the type of club Stephen that would fly mm. to away no. games no. there's so no. many yeah. of them uh, do now there was some there was some really long journeys if you were in the well, Yorkshire, we both played at Sheffield yeah. United. If you're mm. down in South East, South West, it's... Uh, Plymouth and Exeter. Yeah, you know, if, if, you do a, if you do a Tuesday, Wednesday night game, mm-hmm. you're getting back at four or five in the morning. Norwich and Ipswich, are they yeah, not among they the worst, are, most are, difficult places yeah, to get exactly. to? And yeah. of course, Peter Grant, who is with us so often, is on Makes the... Makes it even worse yeah. trying to get well, there. Trying to get to him. Trying and, to get to him. <laughs> so he's away walking, of course, for Celtic Foundation. Brilliant. So he's over there. Good on them. They've started now, Fantastic. haven't they? Fantastic. I don't know how, Spain. how yeah. long is he away? What are they? Uh, five days. It's 116 right. kilometres. How many miles is that? 80, uh, 90 miles. So yeah. 20 odd miles a day. Tremendous. So good luck to him. He, he runs. He said this the other night that, that he runs that just about every day anyway. He does. <laughs> he's fit as a fiddle, yeah. isn't he? Yeah. Any word on John just throwing this at you? Because we talked about you know players who are missing from the Scotland squad just now. We know Kieran Tierney with the injuries had. John shorter term one. Is he back training? Yeah, well, John yeah. and my, my sister Katie, they're 30 on Friday, so we're yeah. planning to go down next week for the Bologna game, the Champions League, so he's under a, some domestic pressure to be fit for that one. But, <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, yeah. you can't... Hamstrings are... Hamstrings are hamstrings. You're dictated to... Yeah. And they'll know, I mean, you can't rush back at hamstring or you're another four, four to six weeks after that because yeah. you, you'll absolutely break down. So you're not going to rush it back, Villa having another excellent season I think the manager's just as good as anyone in the world I think honestly what he's done at Aston Villa I think still underrated from where they've been years ago to think that they're now beating teams like Bayern Munich at home um, Man United sitting in for a point to, to, to get up the road with a point at Villa Park he's just um, I think he's one of the best in the world so Friday and of course you'd be there and Bologna he's not playing because he's injured but he's on the way back Lewis Ferguson so you and Barry could have gone down for that one yeah I was yeah. just reading I mean reading the prep for the for the game it'd, been, it'd be great to see John yeah. and, and Lewis come up against each other Champions League level to 
Glasgow boys and it'd be yeah. amazing but I was just looking at them pencilling in I mean that is a horrible when you start to look at dates to come back it's mm-hmm. uh, we spoke in the foot I think he came on the show um, he did yeah. and spoke about that journey about mm-hmm. timing of, of when you when you're going to get back it's such you, you, you're targeting a date and then you don't make that date it's just such a long road it's uh, the, the ACL recovery it's rehab it's such a it's mind numbing and a big challenge to get through so Scotland in action tomorrow night um, against Portugal it'll be a, a sellout tomorrow evening uh, Ben Doak did well the other night will he play tomorrow the manager gave us his thoughts on the player physically ready yeah for sure it's just whether I choose to start him or not that'll be my choice no physically he's fine like I said the boys are recovering so it's recovery recovery the the period between the the games is very sh- it's very short so you spend most of these two days just recovering like I said, I'll assess the squad later. We'll speak to the medics. We'll speak to the, the sports science guys who tell you about how much they've run and how many sprints they've made. And, and then we make a decision on that. You've always got the balance. Like we know Ben's a talent, and we, but we want Ben to be a talent for the next 15 years, not for the next 15 months. So, as I always say, don't put too much pressure on him. He's a young man. He, he will make mistakes in the game. He will do some really good things in the game. It's to get the balance right between giving Ben the opportunity to play which he's, he's more than capable of taking but making sure that we also protect him a little bit and we don't overhype sometimes and maybe in the past there's been players that have been a little bit overhyped that, that don't fulfil their potential the most important thing for, for Ben is that he fulfils his potential and if we can help him to do that that's what we're trying to do Andy, how good was he? Yeah, I like him. I, I just like he, the potential that he's got. I like the way that he's so direct. He really wants to take on his immediate opponent. He's got a bit of pace. He can get to the byline. He can make things happen. He's not been playing uh, a lot of football. So, obviously, Middlesbrough, they're at home at Bristol City at the weekend. Um, he's, you know, when I saw him about a month ago, he played about 20 minutes. I think the next game he maybe played half an hour. I know that he started games recently and he's played about an hour. So I do hear what Stevie Clark is saying, just trying to build him up. And, uh, you know, obviously Middlesbrough will... Not that they'll have an influence on how many minutes he gets, but uh, the last thing you want to do is, is push him too hard when he's had uh, a long-term injury. Stephen, I know you rate him highly. Yeah, he also carries a confidence, probably bordering on that kind of arrogance of he almost yeah. he'll be approaching this game against Portugal thinking, yeah, you pick me, uh, I'll, I'll take the ball, I'll get at them. Um, which, as I said, at a time where confidence has been low across across the country and the national team, it is a, a breath of fresh air. And sometimes when you reflect on what you're missing at the Euros, could it have been thrown on a Ben Doak with 20 minutes to go, some of the substitutes at the tournament, didn't really work out for us could it have been he, he just grabs a great game by the scuff of net and gets at the hungry def- defence for example so it's a it's a, I always say like, I cut, at almost that arrogant side it's it's a big strength in a player it's almost like I uh, put the chest out and say nah give me the ball mm. I'll show you Is there a similarity in the confidence stakes with Billy Gilmer as well a bit like Ben Doak he's got a bit more experience now a couple of years older but he's got that swagger yeah, I, his first team, his first games at Chelsea. I remember mm. thinking, how do you actually break into a Chelsea team? <laughs> Not just this team that spent I think, spent about a billion uh, over the last yeah. ten years. How do you get into a Chelsea team? Well, you have to have that swagger. Yeah. You have to say, if I'm playing in uh, whatever it was called at the time, the Carlin Cup, League Cup, whatever mm. it was called, if I'm playing in that, and I'm going to get the ball and I'm going to make things happen and watch this, I can I can pass the, it forward. So the best thing you can do, Billy Gilmore, is, is play a killer pass. And that is really what you want to see. The best yeah. thing that Ben Doak can do is use his pace to get past players. He's exciting. He gets you on the uh, the edge of your seat. And uh, that's why there's still a bit of life, I think, in this Scotland team. <coughs> right, let's uh, get someone who's often got us on the edge of our seats, depending on what he says. It's Laurie. Good evening, Laurie. Hey, panel. Good evening. Hi, Laurie. Hi, Laurie. Uh, I'll take my thoughts, guys. Uh, personally, I, I think that the Scottish team are probably playing as well as can be expected. Mm-hmm. Uh, given the resources at uh, Stevie Clark's disposal, uh, I don't think that we're a, a team of world beaters. Plenty of honest endeavour, but there is a decidedly distinct lack of class. And I've not been unkind to anyone uh, when I say that. Uh, I, I would suspect that the tide of public opinion, perhaps, is turning against uh, Stevie as much as I'm the first to say 
I really don't see how you can improve things because there is a depth, a quality yeah. in the ranks, especially up front. Uh, but uh, managers, as the guys well know, will be judged on results. And I'm afraid that irrespective of uh, how close they've run these teams like Croatia and Portugal and Poland, they're not getting the results. And 1-1 one, one in 15 matches won't cut it. I think he's running out of tomorrow's, is Stevie. Uh, I think that unless they get a positive result against Portugal, uh, then I would suspect that uh, he's walking the green mile. Uh, the panel starts. Yeah, yeah, well, you're maybe a bit more measured, uh, but you're coming at the, the same angle as our first caller, Stephen uh, Laurie. He wasn't having him at all and thinks we might lose heavily tomorrow. Um, no, I would stick with Stevie Clark. I think what you see with the players is uh, a group that are playing for him. This is a, a, a team, I wouldn't say it's been decimated, but we don't have a lot of our, our uh, bigger players to, to pick from. I think what he has to learn is just just to be a bit more adventurous and uh, get the, the fans back on side by getting them on the edge of their seat, playing players like uh, Ben Dog. It's really... I mean, I, I said it the other day, we can produce the most wonderful batch of defenders who play for all the top clubs. The same with midfield players. Just our, our struggle recently has been to have... You know, top class uh, strikers, guys that you can easily rely on at international level to put the ball in the back of the net. We don't have that. And, you know, I think we're doing reasonably well. We're playing reasonably well. The biggest thing is the lack of adventure, Laurie, that we had in the Euros. Yeah. That, that is the thing that has turned everyone against mm. uh, Stevie Clark. <coughs> Stevie, what would you say? The tide of public opinion is what Laurie said, and you can sense. That it's changing Yeah Steve Clark's not daft I think you'll know that as well um, One one thing for me I mean I've probably long thought it You think Sometimes we look over the fence Obviously mm. our neighbours England Sometimes we take uh, The lead off of, of what they do Sometimes for the, yeah. the good Sometimes not so good But They always seem to have Kind of succession plan mm. Thinking now Steve Clark If Laurie thinks that He might walk the green mile After tomorrow night But who, who's Who's even the caretaker Yeah Scott Gemmell said another campaign with under 21s fell short. Obviously, more experienced coach, he's not going to be the, the future Scotland manager. Um, James Morrison left, yeah. Alan Irvin comes in. Can we, Can we? obviously, Stephen Naismith just lo- lost his job, but can the minute that can happen, can we identify him as maybe been part of, he's been part of the, the, the management um, group before in the national team? But can we have the under 21s manager or can we have something where they're all working together? Because I don't know if there's a manager out there that's willing to take the job with the current crop of players that can get the performances that Steve Clark's getting out. Obviously, he there's not a lot of personality in it, but there's young players coming into the squad. It's but it's within an organised structure. But just that that bit for me, like what is the what's next after Steve yeah. Clark? Is there someone we can get like Scott Brown at Air? Is there a way that he can postpone the league game so that he, for every national group, is a former Scotland captain, former Celtic captain, absolutely got a presence, absolutely got a lot of buzz about him. Is there a way we can get guys like that involved? And to come and assist? Come and assist, Steve, Steve Clark. Yeah. yeah. Good notion. Laurie? Well, uh, I'm listening with interest to what the guys are saying there, uh, and I largely agree with their sentiments. Uh, I think that the problem uh, is that, you know, you kind of make to quote an old saying here, you can't make a, a salt yep. pass at a, a, a yep. sow's ear. Yep. Uh, regarding Scott Brown, I think that that probably would be just too much of a quantum leap for Scott Brown, uh, who is learning his apprenticeship at Air United. I think it would be some considerable time before he could be considered as a bona fide candidate. What, what I will say as well, Paul, is that yep. uh, when you think about Stevie Clark. You know, uh, people are turning on him now. However, it should be remembered, in fairness to the guy, that he has got us to two European uh, finals. Mm -hmm. Now, he had much more illustrious predecessors Mm -hmm. that failed to to get us uh, to the final stages of tournaments. I'm I'm thinking in particular of Alex McLeish, who won a domestic treble here, of course, with Rangers. He won a cup with Birmingham City down in England. 
and of course the late great Walter Smith, mm-hmm. uh, who got us uh, to the cusp of qualification. Yeah. I remember it all went horribly wrong a number of years ago against the, I remember. the Italians. Yeah. But the point I'm making is uh, Walter Smith in particular uh, had, uh, you know, a, a, a much coveted CV and a very impressive mm-hmm. resume. So if guys like that uh, were unable uh, to get us uh, to the major tournaments, uh, you know, I, I really don't know what the expectations are. As to who might succeed Stevie Clark, I really don't know. I agree with, with Stephen there. I, I think it'd be a bit of a poison chalice. Uh, I would suspect that there'll not be any shortage of candidates, yeah. uh, guys who will be looking to, to prove themselves. Uh, perhaps they might look to the continent. Mm-hmm. For a success, of course, they've done that before with Bertie Volts, and, and that didn't prove. Uh, no, it didn't, did it? Did it? Uh, no, it Murray, did not, uh, can we have any? What's your expectation for tomorrow night? Because if we get a draw tomorrow, suddenly people can say, "Yeah." I mean, I'm just looking at Sky there; they were showing you all the defeats recently. So the record book is not good, but the play has been better in the last number of games. Could well, we get well, a draw tomorrow? Good. Yeah, well, I'm hoping so. Uh, I think they are capable of getting a draw. I think, yes, uh, I agree. I would concur with what you said. They haven't been playing badly at all. But, you know, everything is dependent on results. Yep. And if they were to lose tomorrow, I think he's going to alienate himself even further uh, when the majority of the supporters mm. are out there. But I think the only think time the SFA would take action, Laurie, is if if the crowds just started to, to fall away. Yeah. I mean, that, that financially, that, that is a problem. I think they're all about uh, finance. I agree with you, Laurie. There's not a great deal of candidates that are jumping out. I think the obvious one in Scotland is just because of his longevity is uh, probably Derek McInnes. He's he's managed a lot of games. He's had European um, exposure, mm-hmm. but you would you, you I'm sure you would just uh, you know put it out pretender who would who would apply for it. You would get a lot of names. I mean, you're looking at Portugal who've got Roberto Martinez. Yeah. For the, for my um, motherable man, for my motherable man, of course, yeah. uh, he's been through a lot. He's worked at, at, at Belgium as well. But you, you can get uh, good coaches. We do have, um, we do have a decent team. How much better can we be? I think we can defend really well. I think we're, I think we're comfortable doing that. Um, but it, it's it's being expansive. It's being that a uh, bit more adventurous that uh, is a problem. For and Andy, us. what do you think of what? Stephen suggested somebody like a Scott Brown coming up to be part of the setup, along yeah, with Stevie you're, you're, Clark. You're, I don't think Stephen's saying for, for him to take no, over when the, um, yeah. you know when the, the current manager moves on, but just to have that experience, uh, given the fact that um, you know he's very young in his managerial career, to to be involved at international football, to to mix with the players, just to have that uh, stature again and. You know, maybe you could do it with a number of um, coaches, not just the one. You could bring someone in who's a bit younger, a bit fresher, who's so keen to learn, who wants to to know an extra thing or two and just be involved in going up against some of these fantastic teams that we've been playing. Croatia, Poland, Portugal tomorrow night. You've got to be able to learn something there. The The problem, I mean, like a club side, you could have managers going for jobs and, you know manager could say if you give me this job I'm going to bring X to play in goals I'm going to play X to play up front managers across the board be thinking do I leave this job to go and take the Scotland job who's who's the, who's the goalie out there after Craig Gordon who's 42 in, in December who is going to be the number one have we definitely got someone better than Angus Gunn what's happening in the striking department Lyndon Dykes really struggling to get a game in the League One with, with Birmingham so there's not there's not a big group of players unused untapped by the national team that a new manager can just go oh, they've not been used we'll, we'll pick them like you look at Lee Carsley he's taken over from Gareth Southgate mm-hmm. he's brought Jack Grealish back into the fold yeah. a hundred million pound player yeah. that wasn't picked at the Euros and he says well, I'm going to get him back in the team we don't have that luxury so that's, that's my only bit about getting rid of Steve Clark I understand the negativity I understand a lot of people struggling to go over the summer but the grass isn't always greener. Right, be careful what you wish for. Laurie, I know you like to go out for an evening walk. You're heading towards Paisley. Ronaldo is there at the St Mirren Stadium. It's live on Sky at the moment. So, have you maybe seen him before? He's one of the greats, isn't he? Oh, I saw him playing for Manchester United against Celtic. Absolutely yes. fabulous. And the guy, 
takes such good care of yourself. Uh, yeah. it, it really is an astonishing specimen for a guy at 40 yeah. years, 40 years of age. You know, uh, you know, you remember way back. Well, I'm certainly uh, in my late sixties. Yeah. Stanley Matthews, guys like Terry Sheringham, mm-hmm. uh, who were renowned for their longevity, but. You don't get uh, Ronaldo's, too many Ronaldo's in a dozen. No, and indeed. Laurie, thanks so much for your call. This is the Go Radio Football Show. Listen anytime, wherever you get your podcasts. Let's go, let's go. We'll be live from Hamden tomorrow night. Not actually doing the game, but the build-up. So Barry Ferguson, the former Scotland captain, will be there. Mark Guidi, Scotland's number one journalistic pundit. Can we say that, do you think, guys? Is that fair? You yeah. can say that for a laugh, yeah. You can, yeah. <laughs> for a laugh. Oh, good. And uh, looking forward to it tomorrow night. We've got some uh, good prices coming up as well. We'll tell you about them soon. Chance to get to some of the biggest games coming up here on Go Radio in the coming days and weeks. Listen, if you miss anything on the programme, go to wherever you get your podcasts. You can download it and you can take the best bits, of which there were very many on Friday night with uh, Jimmy Murphy and Mark and Andy. Looking forward to it tomorrow night. Are we going to pick a team in the next few minutes as well for sure. tomorrow? What do we think for the game? I, I just mentioning um, Nigeria. I see they're due to play Libya, but the game, I think, Andy, because of they were held at an airport for hours, just looking to see who's there. Calvin Bassey, for example, was one of the the Nigerian players affected. They were yeah, Dessers isn't there of uh, yep. serial Dessers mm-hmm. of uh, Rangers. One guy who I've just checked uh, mm-hmm. to see if he's playing for Albania, and he is uh, Bajrami. Mm-hmm. He's playing for Albania right. against Georgia. It's uh, it's half time. It's nil nil in their um, in their Nations League game, and this is just a time when everyone wants their players who are away on international duty, just hoping that they. Mm-hmm. They come back uh, with a good result and obviously mm. uh, being fit and you know happy to to have played in a couple of games. We hope everyone's okay. We've heard about delays and stuff, but the Super Eagles, of course, Nigeria threatening now to boycott the African Cup of Nations. They were just held for hours, no food, no water in the airport. Um, Stephen's not really what the game's all about, is it? No, and um, see some of the guys, high profile players, Boniface from from yeah. Leverkusen, mm. he's making an appeal to the. The African, obviously, the, the full continent saying we need to, we need better if we're travelling over to these games. There has to be standards, and yeah, you can you can appreciate some of these guys been stuck in an airport for thirteen hours. Um, it's it's not a good look. Tomorrow night, Scotland against Portugal. We'll come back to that very shortly. Domestically, uh, Hart's still looking for a manager, but it looks as though they found him in the shape of Neil Critchley. Um, he's in deep in talks now and his people with the Hearts board. Former Blackpool and QPR boss in talks with them and he could bring his own backroom team, which does happen. Long-term assistants Mark, Mike Garrity and Ian Brunskill. So, Stephen, you've come up against his teams? No, well, uh, obviously, you know he did a brilliant job at Blackpool, got moved to Queen's Park Rangers. The, the the situation with Rangers, I mean, eh, with Hearts, sorry, at this minute, obviously, bottom of the league, the one worry you have with any mid-season appointment is out with a transfer window. I know Jimmy Thaline's the, came in, been brilliant, but Jimmy Thaline made a, a big use of the summer transfer window, done a lot of good business yeah. over the summer, and he, and he reaps the rewards. Neil Kitch is going to have to come in, find out a lot about Scottish football, and really hit the ground running, because they're already... A number of points behind Aberdeen. You don't want to not just. I know there's a lot of chat about being a relegation battle, but it's a it's a big ask already to catch Aberdeen. You don't want to get it worse. He has to hit the ground running. I've what uh, interviewed him a couple of times, Paul. Uh, mm-hmm. Just doing some Blackpool games mm-hmm. uh, when they had a really good spell that obviously enabled them to get that move to. Uh, to QPR his team played uh, good football if you can remember Karamoko Dembele he was part of that yeah. uh, scene and he had um, Jordan Rhodes who used to play with, mm. with Scotland a decent goal scorer um, and he had a lot of experienced players their, their team was uh, was good to watch and um, obviously he made that move to QPR he pretty much bombed there and then he's got this relationship with, with, with Steven Gerrard but I think Rangers fans think of Michael Beale and his relationship yeah. with Steven Gerrard. It, it doesn't uh, doesn't necessarily mean you're you're going to be top class. It's an interesting move. It's out uh, 
you know, it's out of the the norm, if you like. I don't know whether they've uh, used their analytics to determine who might be mm-hmm. uh, their next manager. But um, yeah, if he if he gets a job, good luck to him. It's it's a it's a big job. You look at if you obviously get some money at home the weekend and they play at home to Nicosia in the in Europe a week on Sunday. Hibs at Easter Road. Oof, the derby, huge yeah. game. Um, if he's announced in the next 24 hours a third game mm. Hibs away when you're already down the bottom of the league season not going well so it's a massive job uh, and good luck to him Mind you if you take over what a boost that is as you know you both know you've both played uh, at Hibs uh, to win the derby there uh, and Hearts have got such a good record in it over the years Yeah I mean this two, yeah there's two weeks of looking at it you come in you win your first game against St Mirren you've a, a game in Europe to build on already three points out of three in Europe I mean what a start going to Easter Road with a bit of confidence about the place but it's um, sometimes worry about these guys coming up from England how much do they know about um, the game up here and, and some of the players he, he was quite attack minded at Blackpool he had a 4-3-3 just the, the players that he, he had there I mean you look at Hearts now I saw them last weekend uh, at Aberdeen I know they lost the game 3-2 but I actually thought they were the better side Aberdeen were decent as well it was a really good advert for the top flight of Scottish football a lot of attacking play and and really good stuff to watch there and, and Hearts were Hearts probably gave up a number of really good chances and Aberdeen won 3-2 but the fact is they are they are bottom of the table and I think the immediate goal is obviously just to think about getting back getting that winning habit back getting into the top six it's going to be a a tall order to get European football again it's so strange when you think of the last few years obviously we yeah. don't have it from the future but that third place getting guaranteed European football mm. and the financial windfall you, you felt like once we got that we thought we've definitely got a, mm. a team finishing third in group stage you felt like the five six million on top of the rest of the clubs would make it we could build on it it's almost been every season the, the next season the, the teams have really struggled and, and struggled badly it's cost managers a job you look at Barry Robson it's uh, from a position of strength with so much finance they've just not been able to build on it Barry Robson they, they were doing well it was Eintracht they just lost to and then and he was in the League Cup final less than a year ago and then by the end of the following month January he was out it's cruel it switches and changes so quickly and on Hearts Andrew McKinley the chief exec says they won't shatter the wage structure to keep Lauren Shankland at Tyne Castle you feel that ship has sailed kind of thing Andy in a way don't you he's been amazing for them who knows what will happen but you wouldn't yeah, be surprised if he moved he, he passed up a couple of real yeah. snips at Pataudry mm-hmm. uh, last season they were in the, the back of the net but he also did uh, some good things Um you, you need to be sure where his mind is at. Was he really hell-bent on a move? Um, I mean, this is the time where he will be able to get a, a contract that should, you know, give him a, a, some sort of comfort in, um, you know, in the next two or three years. Might not be a, a, in a richer league, but he certainly won't be a pauper at heart, so I don't you, think. You would absolutely take uh, Lon Shantley in a free transfer for your Rangers. You think of striking options they have spending so much money on Dessers and not to knock Dessers he, he scores goals domestically he's uh, he's been one of Rangers better performers but guys like Danilo Igamani um, absolutely even if he's not your main striker getting into next season you're absolutely taking him in the free transfer Someone who could be on his way permanently out of Celtic he was a big money signing a couple of years ago Alexandro Bernabe the Argentinian could seal a permanent move in January uh, to Internacional and Andy that would be a good move for him it just didn't work out did it? Didn't work out for him because he was up against a better player and Greg Taylor and it just shows you that uh, Greg Taylor as a left back he has been remarkably consistent um, you know some of his uh, forward passes some of his killer passes are are terrific. I think that's down to the fact that years ago he used to be a midfield player. Yeah. Mm. But he has been, I think, uh, one of the, the most consistent players at Celtic over over the last couple of seasons. All right, hour two, taking more of your calls. We're going to uh, look at what the team will be tomorrow night for this absolutely crucial game for Scotland. Can we get a win or a draw against Portugal? 08, 08, 17, 17, 700. Andy Walker is here. So too is Stephen McGinn. That's coming up after the news. This is the Go Radio Football Show. Listen live weeknights from five on Go. Let's go. 
This is the Go Radio Football Show. Listen anytime, wherever you get your podcasts. Call 0808 17 17 700. Let's go! Do you know, we've teamed up with Hamden Hospitality. We're going to give you the chance to win an unforgettable match day experience at the Premier Sports semi-finals League Cup semi-finals you and a guest could be enjoying well either Rangers Motherwell or Celtic Aberdeen from Hamden's exclusive terrace the terrace experience is the ultimate way at Hamden Park to enjoy the match with three hour pre-match access so that's before the game to the exclusive bar a complimentary drink and arrival question and answer with a football legend live DJ plus post-match access to a private bar. So you can register now at thisisgo.co.uk and that'll give you a chance to win and you could be playing Last Fan Standing this Friday here on the Go Radio Show between 5 and 7pm. So just go to thisisgo.co.uk Register. It's absolutely free and my goodness you could be on your way then to Celtic Aberdeen Rangers against Motherwell. Andy Walker is here. Andy, what's you've had many great moments at Hamden. What's what, what one would spring to mind? Well, I always remember going and tr- first sort of experience of being around there. I, I trained with Queens Park for a while, uh, one or two games with the Strollers, as, as they were known then, the yeah. reserves. But I played there for Easter Craigs. It was an amateur cup final, and we beat a team from East Kilbride. Beat them three two. That was tremendous just to play on that on that grass. And uh, then when I went to Motherwell, um, just playing in a big game, we played Celtic in a in a semi final, and uh, got a goal in a two two draw. Went to penalties, we get beat, um, and then playing there for Celtic a number of times, scoring and I think I scored in a few semi finals just to get us to the final again at Hamden. So. Um, and then obviously my, my debut for Scotland I yeah. came on for Eric Black and played up front with Mo Johnson and that was against uh, Colombia uh, people of my vintage might remember yeah. likes mm. of Valderrama who yeah. had uh, I mean he was known for his uh, outrageous hairstyle hair. but yeah. my goodness what a what a yeah. player he was Stephen so many memories for you at Hamden I've got one. a terrible record playing there oh, yeah. uh, rubbish record yeah, honestly <laughs> um, every time I've played in a Scottish Cup semi we, we're 1-0 down after about 3 minutes yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yes yeah, so, some obviously amazing moments supporting I used to go to all the games obviously my granddad was the president of SFA I used to love it absolutely love it hounding the players for autographs and pictures <laughs> um, yeah. probably in the last few years um, John's 50th cap against yeah. the Republic of Ireland um, you had want the the big box that you're usually in, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Got all the family, all, all the family, and it was just one of those nights. My my second uh, kid Liam had been born that week, so I actually brought the wee man, and that was his very first football oh, game. And it was just yeah. one of those nights where, like, over the last few, years, sometimes you take a step back and go, "Wow!" And it was 50th cap for Scotland. <sighs> Scotland went one 0 down in the night. He scored late. I think Ryan Christie scored the winner from the penalty spot. It was just one of those nights we just think, "Wow, what a night!" And in oh, recent years. Obviously not a game that you go to one 0 down after yeah. two or three minutes. So uh, yeah, probably my favourite. We need to cheer up a bit as a, a nation, Andy. It just seems a bit downbeat at the moment. Listen, I know yeah. we lost again there, and I get it. But I'm just watching the optics. I don't, know, it, I don't know what everyone's looking for as well, yeah. though, because in my lifetime, Scotland, what has been Scotland's mm-hmm. good period? I don't really know. No, like know. we've never, we don't, we're not the type of team that go out and beat teams three 0 with really fluid football. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know, I don't know what people are expecting to change. Yep. It was pre nineteen ninety eight when yeah. we were qualifying for the the World Cups. Time after time, yeah, that's a long time ago. I, I was around when we were as a supporter. Mm. We were qualifying for five World Cups in a row, yeah. mm. and we always had that level of excitement. We, we were always, mm. uh, you know, so disappointed because we couldn't get out of the group. And we had as Stephen mentioned it earlier with some of the greatest names that Scottish football uh, has ever had. So. Um, I, I just think, I mean, I can remember being in here, you know, pre-Euros this summer and the level of excitement from everyone that you saw in the city where you were walking about, they couldn't wait for the Euros to start because we were an exciting team. We promised a level of excitement and we, we just couldn't deliver. There was no adventure. Do you know in England these days they talk about a Spursy kind of performance? Yeah. Is there a thing with Scotland psychologically? Because I'm thinking back 82 World Cup, we had Dalglish and Sunnis and many others. 
so many great players. Jock Steen was the manager. Yeah. And we should have gone through and we fell at the last game. The last yeah. game, we didn't get the result we needed yeah. and we didn't go forward. And then, you know, you go to 86 then, Mexico, uh, players sent off. Grimson just wasn't played that far. He told us before, I've been dropped. Uh, anyway, yeah. they had a player sent off in the first minute, Uruguay. Sorry. Couldn't we beat them. Couldn't beat them. Yeah. Yeah, just a 19, huge disappointment. Yeah. But you're yeah. talking about guys like uh, you know Strachan and mm-hmm. Sunis and you know Stevie Nicol was yeah. playing. Uh, Graham Sharp was playing up front. Paul Sturrock was there. Charlie Nicholas. We had um, yeah. we had tremendous talent, but it, it seems to be uh, a continual level of disappointment. 1990, I never forget the opening game we were expected to win. Brilliant. But, but, but we didn't. And then, you know, Mo Alex, Johnson, uh, Stuart yeah, McCall. Barry McCoy uh, was benched. He was on the bench. Yeah, we beat yeah. Sweden and uh, right. we couldn't beat Costa, Costa Rica. Costa Rica. Yeah, and we were a kind of laughing stock. Why did we shoot ourselves in the foot? You know, you're right. The middle game, we beat Sweden. But against yeah. Costa Rica, Stephen, you probably weren't born or you were just about then. It was, uh, we shoot ourselves in the foot. And I'm just wondering, is there something in the psyche we get so far and then that's it? I do think, I mean, similar size countries, Croatia, Czech Republic, yeah. Denmark, they absolutely yes. blows out the water in terms yeah. of performance. Mm. Um, over 40 years, um, you know, obviously, countries that, that have won the tournament, Denmark, I think, 92, yeah. they, they won it. Right. Yeah. Uh, Croatia, getting to World Cup finals, they just yeah. absolutely blows out the water. Well, I don't know Stephen, I know you're working mm. with a younger group at St Mirren, and I hope we can get to a stage where not only... Mm guys at St Mirren can come through and play for the first team I saw some numbers, I don't know when it was maybe was it last month, a month before, Mm -hmm. the amount of Scottish players that start games in our Scottish Premiership, it is it's frighteningly low It's a pandemic, it's bad bad. This this is a problem that we're going to have, so we're already talking about who's taking over from uh, Craig Gordon Where are where's the next Andy Robertson? Where's mm-hmm. the next uh, John McGinn? Where are these players that are getting an opportunity to play and develop? And I think that's a, a big problem. And I'm not really convinced that the clubs care that much mm-hmm. as long as they have a you know a, as long as they can sell their their players on and get compensation. They seem quite happy. It's the I mean, I, I wonder if I would get an opportunity now at Motherwell. And I know yeah. Motherwell, you're going to throw maybe sure. uh, Lennon, Lennon Miller, Miller. and Wilson yeah. and, mm. and, and all the rest of it. But I do wonder if I would get a chance mm. to play from middle to front at Motherwell mm. today because I needed I needed a lot of time and I needed a, a coach that believed in me and I needed to make my mistakes there. And I think now every club, they're just in it for themselves. Mm. We, we just want to look after ourselves. We want to survive. And just in general, I I don't see a lot of Scottish players getting chances at Scottish clubs. It's, it's the culture as well. We are to blame. We are it's, we're so results driven in the country. It's why the league's so intense. It's a brilliant league to make in, in in terms of so competitive. So it means so much mm-hmm. to everyone. But at some point, I don't know if the SFA what happens with, with the league. Can they regulate? We have to do something. I mean. Yeah. Um, can we get these boys into the team or into, no disrespect there's, there's journeymen come up from, from England being they've played with teammates where they've come up and I'm not they're, sure they're not they, better than yeah, the I'm not sure what the SFA there. can do Stephen because it's the clubs the clubs make all the decisions so if you wanted to have I don't know let's say a minimum of certain players you're not going to get any club who's going to buy into that because well, look at Celtic Rangers. Look how big they are. Look how how much they dwarf the rest of the the league and their their income and all the rest of it. They're but, only interested in themselves. Yeah, but even over the last ten years, whatever you think of any of these individual players, you think of the domestic dominance Celtic have had. How much has that been down to local players? You look at over the years: Callum McGregor, Scott Brown, James Forrest, Kieran Tierney. Anthony Ralston, mm-hmm. love him or hate yeah. him, he has stood up for Celtic mm-hmm. in big yeah. occasions over over the years. These guys have won a lot of trophies, mm-hmm. and uh, Greg Taylor, yeah. Greg Taylor, who'd have thought when he when Celtic signed him for three million, he'd become what he's he's went on to achieve it at Celtic. So, I think the scope to to Andy Robertson at Queens Park 
Andy Robertson no. wasn't absolutely born. He wasn't Dennis Irwin. He, Andy no. Robertson's went the hard way yeah. and he's went on to be an absolute superstar yeah. at Liverpool. We have to try and get these guys into the team. As I said to you, we, we've signed players in, in the time from non-league in England on money. They ended up being around the, the match day squad because they'd be on big wages. Mm-hmm. They weren't better than what was already in our youth team. So why were they bought? Age, I don't know, physicality. Oh, Stephen, so, surely Celtic have got a left back... Yeah, they, they could well, give an opportunity to yeah. uh, even as a number well, two rather, wasn't... rather than uh, Alec Valle yeah. who yeah. is 20 and Celtic are developing mm. for, for Barcelona well, Kieran Tierney wasn't one that you thought, well, he's absolutely going to make it through into the mm. first team he was one that was given an opportunity grasped it and went on to be a £25 million pound player so you're not telling me that the, these clubs aren't identifying them but it's, it's, it's about get, getting it's, them in yeah and it's every club it's not just Celtic it's, it's Rangers as well they've got a I'm picking the two big clubs that we but, always talk about and you would love just to see more talent coming through. I mean, I watched Rocco Vata the other week with, with Watford. He was never going to get a game for, for Celtic. There's been other... Would Ben Doak be playing for Celtic? I, I don't know if he'd be given a chance. Well, you look I, at... I mean, one even at Rangers... Bailey Rice was at Motherwell at the same time as Lennon Miller and it's an, it's an easy comparison to make because it... Uh, by everyone says they were absolutely brilliant both at the same age one's went on to Rangers and he's hardly he played less than 10-15 games in the first team one's been linked to going to Rangers for 3 or 4 million mm-hmm. so it's about I mean you can't tell me that if Bailey Rice the midfielders over the last 4 or 5 years if Lennon Millard came through would he have got through? Probably not yeah. It's. Uh, I mean, we're looking years ahead, mm. and we're looking at the Scotland team now. And we've spoken about how we're we're maybe in a transitional period, and uh, we're we're already looking at. Well, Callum McGregor has left the, the set up. Yeah. He's been a terrific player. Uh, Andy Robertson. I hope uh, you know he can go on and break that hundred mm. uh, cap barrier. I think he's on seventy something at the moment. So. Uh, God willing he'll stay fit and uh, he still wants to play and let's hope we can get maybe a couple well I think of Stephen's uh, brother Probably, John let's, yeah. he, let's hope he can get up to that uh, 100 cap mark and that's what you that's what you want to see you want to see players like that develop and, and be uh, consistently in our in our top side Bill's been on the socials at Go Football Show a Rangers fan saying guys that's uh, he just heard you saying there about Bailey Rice and when are they going to see him because he's got so much talent is what we hear but you don't see it we don't know I mean you don't know because we're not privy mm. to, to watch them training we don't know don't want to put a lot of pressure on the boy oh. um, obviously comparing him to Lennon Miller who's, who's been amazing but that's not a high quality Rangers midfield. You're not no. telling me they can't produce a player that like a Dio Mandy. I don't think Dio Mandy's a top top player. No. I think they could produce a player that, that does what Dio Mandy does. Well he's uh, he's what, eighteen, Billy Rice? Mm-hmm. I mean, should he not be just getting a I don't know, ten, fifteen, twenty minutes? Can he get half an hour? Can you is there a game at Ibrox where you're going to dominate possession? Could you not play him for for an hour, maybe even the whole game? They, they don't all have to be. They don't all have to be a Barry Ferguson. Barry Ferguson is always going to be a top top play. He's the type of player that bursts through. But over the years, some guys I played against at Rangers, Charlie Adams, Stephen mm-hmm. Hughes, Chris Burke, there was always players that were given a chance and went on to have really good careers. What do you think? Give us a call. 08 08 17 17 700. Scotland will be in action just over 24 hours from now. Scotland against Portugal. The manager was speaking to the media today after that disappointing defeat at the weekend Saturday night in Zagreb. We lost 2-1. It would have been 2-2 if we'd scored right at the end, but there was an offside flag that had gone up. Would have been a uh, an own goal. Wouldn't have mattered. It would have been 2-2. But we know the record now. So 14 games without a win. So Stevie Clark was asked today, what about the players? No, no, players are good, ready to go again. There's, there's, there's absolutely no issue whatsoever with that. Like I said before, the players understand where, where we are in the, in the process. They understand what they have to do to get results. And as far as I can see, and hopefully as far as everyone else can see, they're all on board with that. It's really simple. They do believe in themselves. They understand that we're playing difficult opponents. They, they understand also that the, the squad could be stronger. Everyone knows that. All these things are there to be seen. We, I don't speak about it too much because I feel it's disrespectful to the boys that are in the squad. You have, you have to, we have to concentrate on who we have, who we have here. 
and we have to go out against Portugal and we know we have to be very good at everything we do in the game and hopefully we can get the result that might just change the whole mood about the place. Well, it certainly would change the mood around the place and the nation. What changes would you make for tomorrow night? I think you'll only make maybe one change. I've written down a team yeah. and a, the one change is uh, Shea Adams she, in for, yeah. for Lyndon Dykes and apart yeah. from that I think he might just step by everyone else. I get, um, I'm hoping that they're all fit mm. and um, you know, hopefully Ben Doak will, will start again because he is an exciting player and the the uh, the people at Hamden want to see him play at Hamden and uh, light that place up. I've got I've got two. I've got what I think Steve Clark will do. And yeah. What I, okay. I, I would go for. Um, what I would say is he is a manager that doesn't make a lot of changes. No. And what I would back that up, apart from the result, the performance was on the money. Mm-hmm. I think he'll go with the same team. Right. Yeah. I do. Well, I Lyndon think Dykes rather than Shea Adams. Yeah, I think he likes having that physical presence up front. I think it was a big it was a blow for him personally Steve Clark because of how much he trusts Lyndon Dykes not having him at the, the tournament he's, a, he's an outball for us he, I think he likes how physical competitive he is all the time even I mean he's not so much he, he's not the guy to go and get the goals but it's a target for, for them to hit so I think he'll go with him I think he'll go again with Grant Hanley I would bring Ryan Porteous back in I'm Biased played with Ryan, but yeah, a big, sure. big fan. I, I think for me, he's slightly ahead of Grant Hanley. Obviously, Grant Hanley not playing at, at Norwich. I don't think Ryan Porus is playing at Watford. He's in and out, obviously, yeah. not obviously at top form, but I just think the type of game, talking about maybe can we have a bit more possession? John Sutton, Ryan Porus will take the ball mm-hmm. all, all night. Grant Hanley, he had that unfortunate slip the other night, obviously, yeah. the one the night against Poland. That's what, I, that's what I would change, and I would bring Shea Adams back for Lyndon Dykes, but. I do yeah. genuinely think he'll go with the same team. Look at the speed and speed of thought of the Portuguese. I mean, that's going to be really, well, really tricky. Well, uh, yeah. anyone going along tomorrow night, their first mm. touch is, gives you instant control all mm. over the pitch. And uh, we're not just talking about Ronaldo, you know, Ruben Neves and Diaz, Dalo, Jota, Lealdo. Mm. They were so good mm. uh, over mm. in Lisbon. So, um, yeah, we are up against it, but we, I'm sure we will get our chances we, we we can be very dogged and determined in defence um, and I'm certainly not ruling out um, you know Scotland getting a, a decent result that, that is the bit if, if we change manager you get the, the fresh manager the, yeah. the fresh ideas but for the most part they'll be the same mm-hmm. you think of Ange Postacoglu coming in at Celtic and he's saying right okay we're going to play the halfway line he goes out and get Cameron Carter Vickers and Carol Starfield two super quick defenders that can play the halfway line because they can win a race in their own half we don't have that type of defender so any manager coming in whether you're Pep Guardiola you're not going to go and play at the halfway line and play this modern brand of total football and we're going to play a really aggressive high line because we don't have pace at the back mm. so that is a blueprint what's been successful for us over any Scotland team in my lifetime and I think as I said I think the team are playing well and we are due a little bit of luck whether Portugal are too strong for us in the night it might not be this one but it, it, the performances are, are fine they're not the problem mm-hmm. Here's the manager he was asked today about the game plan for the Portuguese tomorrow Sometimes the, the quality of the opposition determine how, how often you get to attack so what we have to do is make sure that we maximise the, the moments when we have the ball uh, something that we do speak to the players about is, is trying to improve our ball possession uh, when we play against the top sides we did that against Croatia and I think you see the, the results of that was a really strong performance away from home. Hopefully we can improve the ball position at home against a pot one team and we get a similar performance and a much better result. Yep, uh, similar performance, much better result. I know Martinez has been saying that he subbed Ronaldo the other night to have yeah. him ready for tomorrow for Hamden. He's never played here. Well, I think we are. I'm yeah. looking forward to seeing yeah. him play. He's a phenomenon, as Stephen was mentioning earlier. This is their second, I think, away game on on the bounce, yeah. um, and so they will they'll be going through their squad. But we, I mean, some of the names just jump out at you. And uh, Ronaldo, uh, we we know he takes all the corners, all the free kicks, all the throw-ins, <laughs> all the penalties. Yeah. Uh, he is uh, he's an amazing man. He certainly is, and he scored again the other night. He scored in 37 minutes. So, uh, Silva, Ronaldo, uh, getting the first two goals. Then there was an OG, and that was against Poland, as you know. 3-1 for Portugal, away from home. Um, 
and Scotland so unlucky against Croatia I was trying to work out if he's ever won in Scotland yeah obviously Real Madrid well, didn't play against nope. Celtic Rangers nope. Man United he played in, he played yep. in the games Nakamura Naka, scored Nakamura because yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. thinking Luis Aha cool. obviously hit the penalty to yeah. and I thought yeah, Ronaldo yeah. would have scored that yeah. but I was trying to think I was wondering if he was part of the the, the, the one each game or, yeah. or if he was part of the game I think when Rooney scored a late goal at Ibrox I wonder if any somebody will tell us. Yeah, listeners are James, listening in, but I was trying to think. James will know. I mean, there must yeah. not be in many countries across the world no, that indeed, he's not winning. <laughs> that was unexpected that night, wasn't it, Andy? I think it was. Uh, yeah. Um, it was Great Cox day. probably. Nakamura. Great what night. a strike! Absolutely. Yeah. It was Archie, I think that. It was night. Archie? That was with, Nakamura. Yeah. So that I mean that was amazing, and you do get these uh, extraordinary incidents. He yeah. was uh, top class. Guaranteed any free kick within shooting mm. range tomorrow and Aldo's on it. He's up for it. 08, 08, 17, 17, 700. We're going to be there tomorrow night. Barry Ferguson, Mark Guidi and me, Paul Cooney, looking forward to the build-up to the game and uh, so many young people coming along all ages to see Ronaldo but we would love Scotland to take something from it do we panic though if we don't that's what I'm going to ask you after the break this is the Go Radio Football Show listen anytime wherever you get your podcasts let's go countdown on to Scotland tomorrow night surely we're not going into the record books for all the wrong reasons if we did lose tomorrow there would be five defeats in a row I don't think it's ever happened Steve Clark yeah people a few callers tonight not happy but it was a long long it was decades where we didn't appear in any 1998 up until 2021 we weren't in a major tournament and then of course Mitrovic saved by David Marshall Scotland through to Euro 2021 you, you can just yeah. see you can feel it when we get to our major tournament the level of excitement right across the country it just ranks up and it was it was it was great to feel that in the build up to the Euros but uh, yeah the tournament itself was such a disappointment objectivity went right out the window we were all guilty of it I, I remember on the night before it were building up to what do you think I think at least a draw almost everyone said it <laughs> I, 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 listen I'm not faulting anybody but my goodness that was a horror show that night wasn't it I say every time I'm not yeah. getting um, <laughs> carried about, away I'm not yeah. going to do a show and by the end of the show think that I did it with the Germany game yeah. this season I've done it with Dortmund Leon make eight changes and you go I think Rangers are going to win tonight yeah. and then lose 4-1 so yeah. n- need to learn that lesson one day not to go uh, carried away Looking forward to this weekend as well we won't talk too much about the domestic scene but a few of you are on saying what are you reckoning this weekend Dundee United against Hibs I mean every game carries something Hearts against St Mirren will Neil Critchley be the new coach by then head coach Motherwell against Dundee Paul McGinn the captain well on form thought he might have been in the Scotland squad St Johnson against Ross County of course with the new manager at St Johnson and Ross County needing the points too and match of the day 3 o'clock Celtic against Aberdeen and well done Celtic not taking uh, the money Uh, listen you'd love to watch it if you're not at the game but for the fans who want to get there at three o'clock on a Saturday, then they said, nope, we're not taking the, the dosh, 75 grand. That's the, that's yeah. the game of the day, but I, I, I'm really interested to see what will happen at Tannadice with Dundee United and Hibs. When you think mm-hmm. how much Hibs have spent on their squad, yeah. mm-hmm. and when you think Hearts have, they haven't won a game apart mm-hmm. from that European one, but you know Hearts, Hearts could be level or, or in front of Hibs in the next couple of weeks with the, the Derby looming, and they're only three points behind them. If Hibs were to lose uh, to Dundee United, and remember, Dundee United promoted side, and the, that was a manager who was under pressure before a ball was kicked, but he has he's uh, made a really good uh, impact in the top flight. So for David Gray and for Hibs at the weekend, really big game. And they got a win, a good win, just before the Edinburgh Kilt Walk the day before, and then they didn't play for another couple of weeks because of the international break. It is stop-start, and it must be tough for managers, especially for somebody who's new to the job. Stephen, you know him, Sir David Gray, as they call him, in the Leith area and the, the green side of Edinburgh, but it, it's really tough to get this. He's got a huge squad, hasn't he? It's not all his players. Yeah, there's mm, a lot of bad transfer windows, yeah. season in, season out. Um, it's, it's, since Jack Ross left I don't think they've probably had a good transfer window um, and David Gray's inherited a lot of players that have, don't even go on his bench so really I mean they've spent a fortune in the last few years and underperforming so yeah it's a huge game I think I think what Andy said they, for all the stick hearts have taken and I'm sure Hibs fans have dished out some stick to, to their counterparts across the city they don't want to begin into that derby 
behind Hearts in the league So I think it's a game they can win Against a newly promoted side Obviously a difficult game But I think if they show the performance They show the Ibrox I think they're more than capable of winning the game And then Sunday um, The match of the day Kilmarnock against Rangers Huge for Kelly And also for Rangers Because Rangers have to stay on the coattails Of Celtic and Aberdeen Stephen, given the way the Dons are playing yeah, well, I mean Kilmarnock, really tough place to go for Celtic Rangers over the over the years, and it's going to be a humdinger. It's going to be straight after the international break, players from across Europe back, and that that Astro Tough pitch. It's, I mean, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a fan of Astro Tough pitches when they're good. That one's not a good one. Um, Kilmarnock obviously buoyant after their their turnaround Dundee, really big win. Um, getting that three-two victory, and they'll be feeling good going into the game. And I think they'll fancy their chances of, of beating Rangers. Yeah, it's been a tough one recent years. Uh, Kamalag have had good results against both Rangers and uh, Celtic. Um, and I think we're if you assume that Celtic will beat Aberdeen, although it won't be easy. I, I enjoyed the way Aberdeen played uh, against Hearts. I like to look at Keskin and shot some for Finland the other night against uh, yeah. England. Yeah. Nisbet looked uh, sharp. Duke came on as a sub and made a, made an impact. Palaversa, who's got who got the goal, he was a, a another sub as well. The His Croatian. So yeah. um, it'll be a good game, but I expect Celtic to win. And of course, being eight in front before Rangers uh, kick off against Kilmarnock brings its own pressure. A huge game for Rangers. Looking from their point of view, Conor Barron though they'll be hoping that if he does play or comes on tomorrow night that he's fit for the weekend. Because Stephen, it is remarkable the way he's become such a an integral part of Philippe Clement's team. Yeah, I and mean, you think you know, Nico Raskin's back in the, yeah. in the fold. Mm-hmm. Obviously, showed a, showed a lot of promise. Not really featured since Philippe Clement took over. He thought being kind of countryman that it would really benefit Nico Raskin, but not really happened. Um, so you're hoping Conor Barron can from a Rangers point of view he can get some game time tomorrow night against the Portuguese superstars and take the, the, the confidence from it into his Rangers performance and continue a decent per, uh, personal season and for the big two Andy it's quite a spell coming up and it's a great spell that's what you want isn't it you've got European football you've got yeah. Kelly Rangers looking at Rangers first well, of all it's now a Bucharest coming up yeah I think the I difference think. between uh, let's say Celtic before they went to, to Dortmund mm-hmm. there was just such an air of positivity Celtic had made such a an impressive start in their Champions League mm-hmm. campaign taking five off uh, Bratislava but I don't think you'll find many Celtic fans being confident going away to Atalanta I think Brendan Rodgers will just he'll play the same way uh, I think he's trying to concentrate on the, the home games to get the points that they need to make the next stage of the Champions League what you don't want is another is another battering do, another, do you really think he'll all play the exact same way? It seems to be what he's saying. I don't know whether he's just offering that up as some sort of um, smoke screen. guard or smoke screen, but um, you do seem to get the impression from a lot of supposedly elite managers. Mm. I, I've got a weird Ange Postecoglou does it. I'm not for changing. I play. I'm just going to play the the same way. That's the way I want my teams to go. It, it used to be, you know, when you had managers like um, Alex Ferguson, Jim McLean. They would adapt. They would. I mean, they they got to European finals with Aberdeen, Dundee United, and they were great at um, you know changing their, their style of play just to, because of the the opponent they were up against. But it seems to be the way now that um, there's only one way of playing, and you've got to play out from the back, and you've got to have a passing game, and you know just belt it up sometimes. Go for it. Get the high ball up. Boom. Well, up goes Ida, or up goes Desus for Rangers. Sometimes, sometimes a. a, a a long clearance is good sometimes a, a long clearance into Zo- Rosette mm. is is better than giving a goal away Stephen, oh, did you like that tactical insight there from me <laughs> yeah, just yeah. Get, the, yeah, get the ball up there. what do you think because I suspect I think he will change I don't know what he's going to do I think he might I, th- I, th- I think it, I think he will I think he'll have to I mean he's, he's a top top manager I think he'll, he'll adapt he's not going to watch the, the game back and go mm, wee bits and bobs he'll swallow small teeks I think he'll say no because at- Atalanta are probably better off the ball than by uh, Bruce Dortmund are. I think they are absolutely intense on and off the ball. And I think if Celtic are as loose in possession and if they're as wide open, then it will be a, a, a sore night. So what, what what they have do Celtic is they they can have options. They have 
midfielders I know they don't have an out and out defensive they, they don't have a destroyer in midfield but they can flood it a bit more they've got the four centre midfielders competing for three places can you fit them all in and I, I just think back I know it's a totally different level but the day Celtic went down to ten men mm-hmm. against Livingston and Dyson Maida turned into the, the two yeah. players they have that luxury of almost playing a bit more defensive and allowing Dyson Maida maybe even play upside Kyogo and just say go and um, we'll take a lead off you and, it, and it'll time you know you say belt out the park but mm. there's no harm in feeding the grass and and showing the pace of Dyson Maida and, and Kyogo and, and, and asking questions of the other team and for Rangers what do you think the upcoming Kilmarnock game obviously uh, and Stour Bucharest coming up and Rangers would look to take points in that one yeah obviously they like Celtic started well getting a good uh, away result in uh, Malmo and then obviously there was that uh, Embarrassment at home, beaten by yeah. by far the better side who could have could have scored a lot more. But you're not gauging Rangers up against the likes of Leon, given the the quality they had, even the the spend that uh, they have had. But um, this game is it's a new it's a new one, it's a new approach. You 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 wonder how they'll go on. It's the beauty of the Europa League. I think it's not as unforgiving as the Champions League in terms mm-hmm. of. Celtic have a heavy one against Bruce Dortmund and they probably have to go up another level to play uh, the Europa League winners in Atalanta Rangers Stoya Bucharest are going to be a tr- tricky game as, as they all are but it's not, they're not quite of the quality of Leon. Y- you would expect Rangers in front of full Ibrox to, to take care of Stoya Bucharest and I think with the fixtures they have remaining uh, it's a must win game Darren's been on asking what's your view Pep Guardiola for England is it really possible? I'm not sure the English FA want to pay the amount of money that would be required to take him away from City. Um, I think so much just now, I know his contract's up at the end of the season, but so much is is hanging on the future of Man City. These uh, charges that they're up against, how, how's that going to fall? Because if they're going to be stripped of titles or, or relegated a division or deducted an extraordinary amount of points... Maybe that will influence Pep Guardiola and where he wants to be in the immediate future. Stephen? I can't really see Pep Guardiola coaching in the English Championship, so (laughs) (laughs) I concur with Andy. (laughs) Scotland under 21s, Stephen? What are you thinking? Really disappointing the other night. What happened? Really we were, did you watch it? We were, yeah, I watched bits of it. I was just we're so hopeful. There's ways of losing games. Mm-hmm. It felt like we were trying to draw the game 0 0. I mean, you allow a team, but I mean, Belgium are probably on paper a better team than us. They've got guys playing across the, the top leagues in Europe regularly, so you, you're not going to come out absolute toe to toe and go to yeah. win. But it was just, there was no real attempt, there was nothing really to get excited about. And we sat and sat and sat and eventually go down 2 0. And although qualification is still possible, it's touching on a miracle tomorrow night. What's the problem? The fact that a draw. Would have virtually got us to the playoffs. Is so that- a draw would have been enough if yeah. we win in Kazakhstan tomorrow. Right. So we yeah. beat Kazakhstan four one mm-hmm. Paisley. You would like to think we go over to Kazakhstan, although it's a trickier travel, etc. You'd win that game, but we're now relying on Belgium to lose, which I don't think they will. Mm-hmm. It's a it's a tough thing going for a draw. I would imagine. Andy, it's not. Yeah, com- I, I don't think anyone's really set out for that. Of course, you can be cautious, mm-hmm. and then when you get to the hour mark and you're mm-hmm. still level, and a draw would do you, I, you don't need to be really adventurous. You can shore it up again, maybe put on another defensive minded player, but you always still have to have that attacking uh, threat. So it's very difficult to have in your mind from the. Yeah. From the first minute, a draw would suit us here. It's an interesting one because domestically, I always felt it was a decent gauge of how rubbish your manager thought you were <laughs> when you were talking to him when you're preparing for Celtic Rangers. Because yeah. you got that sometimes you get that manager where we, you would always set up defensive, you would always respect the, the better team. But if you thought you were a decent enough team, you'd always have like we can hurt them doing this or that. Yeah. You get some managers that went right. This is going to be a really tough. <laughs> we'll go a back five and then a five in front. So uh, it was always a decent gauge. There was a blow pre-match. Obviously, Conor Barron had a slight knock. We now know he's in the the full international squad for Portugal tomorrow night. Um, Scotland will be without Leon King, so that's uh, not such good news. And Man City midfielder Luis Fiorini, as well as Kamarnock Joe Bobby Wales and David Watson, who all withdrew. So and we've got a, a, there's a clutch of really good young players, but we're uh, we're a bit thinner for tomorrow night for that 
It's going to be tough, isn't it? We can do it though, can we? What yeah, we can, yeah, we can win the game. Yeah. I mean, I expect, I think Belgium are playing hungry mm-hmm. in Belgium. So I expect Belgium to get at least the point they need. So another campaign, one that promised so much yeah, and ending disappointment. Andy, we've heard that one before, haven't we? Well, the, yeah. the, primarily what you want from the under-21s is players that gain enough experience so that they can go on and they uh, perform for the national side. But obviously they have to do that with their, their club side as well. And I'll just go back to the, the point we were talking about earlier, just the amount of players that are struggling to get regular first-team action at their clubs, at their, uh, the Scottish players. It's, it's a big concern. It sure is. Andy, on this day, 2000, Jim McLean stood down as managing director and chairman at Dundee United. So it was a difficult period for him. But my goodness, when you look at the club, they're on the way back now. But Dundee United, for younger listeners, along with Aberdeen, were the new firm. They were they were more successful yeah. for a period than uh, Celtic Rangers. Yeah, and I know that um, you know contracts were different then. Clubs mm. could hold you to your contract without uh, getting a fee, and yeah. that was always a bit of a, a problem. But if you can imagine putting together a Scottish-based team, they were pretty much all Scottish, yeah. Yeah. and they would go to Barcelona and win. They they beat Barcelona yeah. in Dundee at Tannadice. I actually went up to that game just to just yeah. to watch Barcelona and wonder how um, Dundee United would go on. And Kevin Gallagher, a Scottish player, scored yeah. the only goal of the game. And then if you remember Ian Ferguson, who Dude. played with Dundee United, yeah. played with Hearts, played with Rangers. He scored over in the new Camp. They won uh, 2-1. I think John Clark got the other one. But the idea of Dundee United being strong enough, being adaptable enough to go to the new Camp and beat Barcelona with all their stars, it's a truly mm. remarkable thought. And it was a it was a Scottish team. You know, you can the, the names of you know Redford and Bannon mm. and Millen sure. and Sturrock yeah. and Hegarty and Neri and Malpass, Hamish McAlpine and go. It's it's mm. just astonishing that you get that level of player that can compete with the best. I remember the team of the year was uh, the Dundee United team, Aberdeen, at the player of the year, and that was in the Glasgow radio station. Yeah. Anyway, the player of the year do. Well, Aberdeen were winning the Cup Winners' Cup in mm. 83. Dundee United yep. were winning the league yep. in 83. Mm. And I remember breaking through as a Motherwell player and our hardest games were going to Tannadice and going to right. Petodre. Yeah. We, we felt as though we could get maybe something a bit more when we went to Celtic and Rangers because there were more... They were just so attack-minded and we felt we could maybe pick them off. We did on on occasion, but uh, Aberdeen and Dundee United, the quality of player they had was exceptional. Stephen, can we get these days back? And do we need quotas now? Because you made a great point in the first hour. There's not enough young Scots getting a chance in the top divisions here. Well, it's, I mean, it's unthinkable for me. I wasn't born in, in that period. It's unthinkable. It's In fact, it's impossible for Dundee United to go to yeah. Barcelona currently and win, so... Yeah, amazing to think back to, to what they achieved. Next caller, Jim Goodwin. This <laughs> is the Go Radio Football Show. Listen anytime, wherever you get your podcasts. Let's go! go. Coming up after us tonight is Artie Joshi. Headlines today, while well, Scotland were looking back on the 2-1 defeat the other night to Croatia, but more importantly, looking forward to tomorrow night against Portugal. Here's the manager speaking about the squad, about his players, his game plan, uh, and how are the players? Yeah, good. Good. Obviously, like always, disappointed with the result, but I feel as though I'm repeating myself. There is a process that you have to go through. You're playing at the, the top table against top teams. Maybe the results are not going to go for you, but we have to believe in what we're doing, and when I look at the players on the pitch, then I believe in what we're doing. Andy, I suppose they've had a few days then to come back to um, reset for this game. We've heard it so many times now. That must be quite difficult. Or as a player, do you forget it and think, right, I put on this dark blue jersey, boom, here I yeah, go. I, yeah, I think the players are committed. I, I, I do remember when we went through a phase where... I think we all got the feeling some of the players weren't turning up. They weren't yeah. really buying into what was going on at the time. Um, can't remember who the the manager was, whether it was Barry Vokes, maybe um, Craig Levine, I don't know. But No, I think the players now absolutely are, are tuned in and they want to do well. Uh, they want to improve results. They want to just want to get their caps up. It's, um, to be a Scotland player, to take part in a game against mm-hmm. uh, some of the best players in the world that Portugal have, what, what a great challenge that is. 
And Steve Clark has done so much for the nation. You know, it's like it, it, things can change. The temperature's changing, yep. but it could go back to the way it was. I think he's only nine games away from even overtaking the late great Craig Brown in the number of games he's managed Scotland. Well, that's amazing because Craig Brown took us to Euro 96. Mm. He took us to the World Cup in, in 98. Um so for Stevie Clark to have um, you know reached that level, I think it tells you what he has done in terms of changing just the attitude towards uh, the national team. I think there is a well, we did have a level of excitement. I think there is a problem just now because of what went on in the summer, the lack of adventure, the poor results, the the uh, the fact that we we really under underachieved, underperformed. That was a that was a big problem. Darren's been on saying what about the players the defence uh, John Souter and he wants uh, to mention how well he's done this season Stephen what did you feel about the Rangers stopper yeah I think he's having a good season obviously in Conor Goldson's absence mm -hmm. he's um, moved over to his preferred side you know, on the right foot and I think he's been quite clearly Rangers best centre half this season I think he's stepped up I think he looks ahead of, of proper um, and he's it's great to see him first and foremost fit He's been you know, done when he jinxed him, touch wood, but a long period of, of playing games, and it was one thing can you keep John Suter fit? And I think Rangers are getting the reward for it. And Dave, that's what he's needed consistency, stay fit for a long period, and touch wood. I like his ability. Yeah. Um, you always want him to stay fit. I know he's had a horrendous uh, time with some injuries, but uh, in terms of the way we want to play, and Stephen was talking earlier about maybe Ryan Porteous being his partner. Porteous is another one, I think, who can use the ball, pass the ball, uh, whether it's short or long. I think he's got a good passing range, maybe a bit more so than, than Grant Hanley. But certainly Suter, you, you see how comfortable he is with the ball. And at times tomorrow, I think there will be sustained levels of, of pressure that we'll be under. You've got to remember who we're playing against some of the talent they have from middle to front, especially if um, Ronaldo's playing, it'll be, a, it'll be a really big test. I mean, even Ronaldo's winning goal, sometimes you say he's one of the best players of all time, how can you take the eye off him? We didn't even take the eye off him. Yeah. These yeah. players can just find a half yard and, and take the game away from you. So it's going to have to be as good a performance as we've had in the last couple of years. It's going to have to be right up there with the Spain night in terms of performance level and intensity of, of the crowd to get a result tomorrow but as you say I mean sometimes t to qualify from, from tournaments you need to dig out a big one um, the Spain one was our big one but obviously the one in Norway as a squad in the last few years they've, they've capable of producing mm -hmm. a big result out of nothing Mark's been on from Motherwell saying can we give a word a shout out to Tony Rawson because he was criticised in the Euros but uh, I don't think he didn't let Scotland down did he? The other no, night. not at all yeah. and I think the fact that uh, Scotland are now in a back four which mm -hmm. seems to work well for them Ralston I think is is better in in, in that position I think he, he knows when to get forward he's finding it tough to get a, a regular game at Celtic he's clearly a second choice to Alistair Johnson but um, it's great for him that he's getting a bit of game time uh, with Scotland and uh, I thought he did well the other night Stephen well he's going to be up against that we saw in the first half Rafael Leal was in top form against him and really gave him a tough half but like Anthony Ralston that's why I'm a big fan he sticks at it he doesn't go hiding and he had a much stronger second half against him but absolutely they're going to have to if it's Ryan Christie playing on that side they're going to have to double up at times because we can't give him the space that was afforded to him at times over in Lisbon it's going to be some game tomorrow night so what do we reckon we've only got four minutes left of the show it's, it's flown in tonight will it but will it be a long 90 90 odd minutes for Scotland or well do I, I don't I can't see us winning I think Portugal have just got too much I think they've got too much quality with or without uh, Ronaldo mm. they, they've played three games already like us they've won all three uh, we saw their, their attitude against us even when we were in front uh, over in Portugal they come back and they, they got the win and I think they've got the players that will be able to uh, get the win tomorrow I just think we're not in a good place at the moment Yeah, yeah, I, mean, yeah. I agree I mean even if uh, even if we got a result it's going to be a long night it's going to be a long time yeah. without the yeah. ball we're going to have to ride a luck we're going to have to Craig Gordon's going to have to come and catch crosses he's going to have to make saves Um but I just think where we're at at the minute, players we have missing, um, Portugal playing well, fully firing, I, I think they'll have too much for us on the night. 
What do you think the scoreline's going to be? What do you reckon? 2-0 Portugal 2-0 we, we, We're struggling to, to score mm-hmm. goals I mean I know Ryan Christie got a great goal the, the other night And I'm sure we'll have chances We're, we're at home But um, we don't create a, an awful lot of them We don't have a, an out and out goal scorer We do have a, a threat from middle to front Maybe our best uh, threat is Scott McTominay But um, no I just think Portugal will be too good for us It's great to see how well he's doing in Napoli I think he's scoring He's... Yeah. Um, Amazing you think of the stick he came through at Man United, he's yeah. stuck in and um, top us top us area with, with Napoli and, and Starin. So he is the main goal threat. I, I do think we can cause him problems at set pieces. I think if we can try and get up the park, win free kicks, win corners in the Portuguese half, then with we, our physicality we can we can hurt them. But I think we'll score but two one to Portugal. And the crowd, you heard the manager saying the crowd have got a you know, a, a part to play in the game. It's not just down to the players. No, no, the players are good, ready to go again. There's, there's, there's absolutely no issue whatsoever with that. Like I said before, the players understand where where we are in the in the process. They understand what they have to do to get results and as far as I can see, and hopefully as far as everyone else can see, they're all on board with that. It's really simple. They do believe in themselves. They understand that we're playing difficult opponents. They, they understand also that the, the, the squad could be stronger. Everyone knows that. All these things are there to be seen. We, I don't speak about it too much because I feel it's disrespectful to the boys that are in the squad. You have, you have to, we have to concentrate on who we have, who we have here. And we have to go out against Portugal and we know we have to be very good at everything we do in the game and hopefully we can get the result that might just change the whole mood about the place. He sounded quite upbeat there, Andy, didn't he? Well, he's dead right in saying that uh, a win would change the, the yeah. whole mood because we, we need to get rid of this uh, dreadful run that we're on and stop totting them up. One in, yeah. one, one in 10, yeah. 11, 12, we're up to about 15 now. Um and the win changes everything. A win in football uh, changes everything, changes the mood of the players and changes certainly the mood of the supporters. Yeah, I think he'll be... he he'll want this monkey off the back in terms of getting that win, but as a coach, as a manager, to go... to be as in charge as long as possible off the back of the disappointment of the summer, off the back of how many injuries we've got at the minute, I think he'll be delighted how we're playing. Mm. I think he'll be delighted with it. It'd be easy for these players to be calling off or feeling sorry for themselves, but they're digging in in really tough games and giving performances. So I think first and foremost he'll be he'll be delighted that with a makeshift squad team, they're they're competing um, at the top level. Yeah, the crowd have got a part to play. The crowd also have to believe in their in their team and their players. And I, I don't see any reason why they shouldn't believe in this this group of players. We, we've got players who are. I think Daryl just told me we've got three players that are inside the top 10 cap appearances for the country. After 20 years in the international wilderness, this group of players have, have been to two major tournaments. They've got promotion to this top level of the, the Nations League. So I don't understand why the, why people would be doubting about this group of players. It's a tough moment, there's no doubt about it, but we believe in ourselves. So this time tomorrow night we'll be winding up our programme. We'll be live at Hamden. Barry Ferguson, Mark Weedy and myself looking forward to it. And a few of you asking again, yep, it's go to thisisgo.co.uk and you could be joining us for either Celtic Aberdeen in the League Cup semi-final, Premier Sports Cup or Rangers against Motherwell. Thank you, Andy. Pleasure, Paul, as always. Thanks, Stephen. Thanks for having me, Paul. And you'll both be back very, very soon. Coming up after the news, remember, it's going to be Artie Joshi. See you tomorrow night, live, five, from Hamden. This is the Go Radio Football Show. Listen live, weeknights from five, on Go. Let's go!